Good morning, brethren. You are welcome to today's family devotional. We thank you for joining us always. Kindly pass your comments on our posts. Share with your loved ones and even your enemies. Please like our video so that YouTube will recommend us to more people to watch. Then share our videos so that more lives will be saved. God bless you. Today's message is message number 60. And we will please implore you to go visit our YouTube channel always and so that you can visit, you can be able or you can listen to the previous messages. God bless you. And uh, we are going to take our Bible passages from the of book of Proverbs chapter 6, 12 to 19. from verse 12 to 19, and then we are taking Matthew from the book of uh, Matthew, yeah. sorry, Mark. Mark. So we want to take from the book of Mark chapter 10, from verse 32 to 52. Then the book of uh, Leviticus, five. chapter 5, 6, 7. 14 to 7, 10. Chapter 5, verse 14 to chapter 7, verse 10. God bless you. Once more, I implore you to always be with us because our target is to search the scriptures for the messages that the Lord has sent to us through it. And at the same time, um, adapt these messages to our lives. Otherwise, it will be a futile effort. What you are hearing is to be applied to your lives. Now, we are reading the book of... Uh, okay, just one moment. So, the topic for today is Christ has put an end to religious rituals. Christ puts an end to religious rituals. Amen. God bless you. We are reading Proverbs 6 now. A troublemaker and a villain who goes about with a corrupt mouth, who wins maliciously with his eyes, signals with his feet, and motion with his fingers, who plots evils with deceit in his heart. He always tears up conflict. Therefore, disaster will overtake him in an instant. He will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. There are six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a person who stays of complete in the community. Praise the Lord. We want to thank God for that passage. Honestly speaking, any time I read this Bible, I learn so much. I don't know about you. You've had it yourself from that passage. It started with the attributes of a wicked person, a troublemaker, somebody that is a villain, and his duty is preoccupied with causing troubles even in the community. You know, he's interested in killing, maiming, destroying, you know, John 10, 10. He is the agent of the devil, the thief, who has come to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And he enjoys doing that work. He does not uh, cherish progress, but destruction. Some of the things that God says he hates here, the word of God says God hates here, is a haunty eyes. You know, these wicked people, they always just cause troubles all about. They will not mind their business. They put eyes on things that does not concern them. And then at the end of the day, they cause commotion all over the place. I don't know which of these six things that the writer mentioned here. Is your own passion. Do you have haunted eyes? You know, just not being contented with uh, whatever he or she has. 
then do you have uh, this? Are you are you in, are you interested in shedding blood, the blood of others, directly or indirectly? Bible says in Exodus twenty, you shall not murder. You know, and it says you shall not convert what belongs. They enjoy doing exactly what God says we should not do. Are you the type that is always um, just one moment. for purposes of uh, understanding? Let us read what. Those other attributes of a wicked person. They have haunty eyes, yes. There are seven of them, yes. Please read that point. Uh -huh. They lie like anything. They enjoy lying, yes. Hands that shed innocent blood. Uh -huh. they, of course, they shed innocent blood. As I did say earlier, I said it could be directly, it could be indirectly. When you talk evil about somebody, you have shed his or her blood. When you fail to take good care of your children, or husbands not taking good care of their wives, or wives not taking good care of, uh, of their husbands, or all of us not taking good care of our family or parents, we are shedding innocent blood. Yes? A heart that devices wicked schemes. You know, when you see the Bible says, man is very desperately wicked. All the days of his life, he encourages, he cherishes evil thoughts. That's the book of uh, Genesis chapter 6, I think verse 3 now, before God wiped out the entire world, then leaving Noah and his family. No, so, <coughs> excuse me. So, it, it is people just cherish causing problems. You go to a place no peace there anymore. Ah. Maybe the Bible says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. As uh, Matthew 5, the, the Beatitudes. Amen. Uh, but your own case, I'm not referring you to you as I'm talking, I'm talking about the people that are in the habit of this. They cause, they stir up troubles anywhere. As an husband, their own is to do wickedly to their wives. As wives, their own is to plot even evil for their husbands. They, are, they don't give peace. I mean, you go to work, you come back, your wife has caused troubles for you, and you don't even know what to do. Or you yourself, you go out, out there, in the place of work, what you are doing is uh, making sure that there is no peace in the place. Apart from stealing lying and everything, you are manipulating others. <laughs> yes? Feet that are quick to rush Their into feet evil. are quick to rush into evil. Let's go to the house of the Lord. They are not interested. But when they say, let us go and do answers, let us go and fight. Yes, let's, let's cut tight. Uh -huh. What happens? They rejoice, yes? A false witness who pours out lies. They can lie like anything, even as witnesses. They know the truth, but they bend the truth and they witness falsely against the innocent, yes? And a person who stirs up conflict in the community. You see, the community you are in, how do they know you? What do they know you for? Are you the type that is stirring up troubles amongst fellow neighbors, troubles, um, even in your uh, maybe landlord tenants association meetings. is your preoccupation to spoil things. You see, those are the traits of the evil ones. And what does God say about all these things? How did the writer conclude? He say they end up in disaster. Somebody may be doing all these things and it appears as if nothing is happening. Honestly speaking, the end of such person is predictable. It's catastrophe. Please, do not engage in such evils and ensure that you are a peace-loving somebody, somebody who fosters peace wherever you are. May the Lord God Almighty help us in Yahushua's name. Now, let's take the book of Mark chapter 10, I guess. Mark, Christ, Mark 10, Abby. Christ went to Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. 
He reminded the twelve disciples of what will happen to me. Mm -hmm. Then James and John asked okay. for special favor. Let's take those three. God bless you. Of course, Christ is um let me call it a roving minister. He moves around. He's always moving from place to place. And he ministers. So he went to Jericho this time. And but of course, along the way he went with his two twelve disciples and he was like reminding them about what had been foretold about him that he has come to save us. And of course, and to save us will mean that he will lose his life and he will be killed, crucified, and but on the third day he will rise. He now reminded his disciples that it's coming near and near. The appointed time for this one to be fulfilled. But would they understand? They really didn't. But that notwithstanding, Christ knew his purpose. Do you know your purpose on it? Your purpose is to serve God. Your purpose is to serve fellow men. Matthew 22, 37 to 39. You shall love your God with the whole of your heart, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Christ's purpose was to give us salvation. He knew it, and he knew the process that it was not going to be easy, but he must drink of the cup. And he did not reject doing it. He endured. And for you now, what purpose or purposes are you serving for God? What? Are you following Christ by doing what he asks you to do, to love your neighbor as yourself? Love your God, love your neighbor as yourself. Or to your, I mean, the, those who are married, couples, are you faithful to yourselves? Or you are there, I mean, wherever you are, there is no peace. Then um, uh, singles, what purpose are you serving for your people? Are you focusing upon your life's pursuits? And do you know God? And are you following God's precepts? And are you keeping yourself, you know, on the path of righteousness? Or you are busy doing busybody? Then, uh, as a worker, what purpose are you serving for your employer? You are there stealing the organization's resources. Are you, are you not a murderer, murderer of organizations? Every cobo that is stolen in our organization has repercussions. We can now see how many organizations have gone down because those who work there, they have eaten them up by stealing, siphoning money. At the end of the day, the organization could not go on in the operations. And their parents, what purposes are you serving for your children? Are you training them the way? They should go the way of the Lord, the good way. Are you giving them the word of God? Are you uh, providing for their needs? You parents, yours is not to just be rebooking your children. It's for you to take the best of care. Are you truncating their destinies by not sending them to school at least to be able to be themselves academically and then be able to fend themselves in a better way rather than a resort to many jobs or local mechanic or just a uh, car rider at the end of the day. What profit? What purpose? Why do you bring them into the world in the first place? You cannot care for them. That is why the lesson is there always. Fix yourself. Have the number of children you can have. You can cater for. Fix yourself. Don't bring them to come and suffer. Many of the societal problems today we have is because, you see, families exist on survival of the fittest because of what their parents have cost. Amen. When children are too many and you cannot fend for them, of course, there will be thieves among them. There will be night morandas among them. There will be uh, drug addicts among them because they are not given proper direction right from time. No proper education. No, knowledge of God is not in their life and even without being educated, what can they learn successfully and practice that will cater for their future? 
and even make them to come back to the parents and bless the parents. Because the purpose of children is to bless their parents in return for every good thing that they have done for them. Bless them. You don't let them go as sorrowing. And when they are old, you may, they, they would have, like I tell, I tell parents, it's you parents that will do first. Then when you do, take good care of your children. Then when it is well with them, they themselves are now duty bound to reciprocate by giving you the best of care according to the best of their abilities. But when you do not so, where do you want to reap? And who do you want to take that responsibilities for you? Many of you children, who oh, because you think you are now somebody and you neglect your parents, you know, it's a curse, honestly. It's already a curse. Because Exodus 20, um, verse 12 says, Children should honor their parents so that their days will be long in the land that the Lord has given to them. You see, if you are giving your parents sorrow, <laughs> Hey, I mean, your parents may be guilty of not taking good care of you or not maybe sending you to school, giving you the uh, room for your abilities to be properly tapped. But even when you yourself, did you become born again? Did you, you know, uh, uh, Try when I say born again, I'm not saying talking about going to the altar to do altar call. No, 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 no. The type I'm talking about, if your parents are unwilling or they have no ability to help you, especially to go to school, what did you do to help yourself to go to that school so that you can rise in life? If you are still waiting that my parents didn't do, and then even after your parents, you God has helped you to come out. What does the Bible say? Forgive your parents and take good care of them. Are you ready to forgive or you want to do according to your own will? The end of such is calamity. And that will not be your portion. That will not be my portion in your virtuous name. So these things are there for us to know that, you know, we must know our purposes in life and we have to fulfill to the community. Are we not supposed to help develop the community? or we are breeding children that will disturb the community, or we ourselves, we are terrors in our communities. So, please go ahead, give us more time. Sister and James, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if you want to become great, mm -hmm. you must be a servant. Mm -hmm. Christ comes to serve. Amen. That's all right. This is another wonderful thing. Your ambition, self-centered ambition, it is only you that you want to make progress in your organization. You don't want the progress of others. It's happening here. The spirit of the flesh was using Peter and James here. They looked at it. Let one of us be on your right and your left. So that, I mean, vice Christ, Abby, vice Yehoshua, or vice Jesus. They, they, they are appointing positions to themselves. You know that the title Christ is, is title for Christ. So you now say, James, Vice Christ. Peter, Vice Christ. You see, they were pursuing a wrong ambition. They are not looking at what Christ is doing right before them. To go out and do good and preach and minister to people, save souls. But they are looking at the titles they will carry. They want to know who is senior, who is superior. Seniority, you know, is so common in churches today. That's what they are after. Christ now told them, it is not for me oh, to tell you who will be leader. He who amongst you that will be leader will be, Christ understood them that it is leadership they are struggling for. Christ understood them that, and he told them, say, who amongst you who wants to be a leader must be the servant of the people. Say, I have not come to be saved, but I came to serve. You are looking at my example, yet you don't understand. I will go out to people and heal them. I will minister the word of God to them. I will do everything to make life peaceful for people. But you are looking for position. What is the meaning of your position that does not carry responsibility with it? You want to carry title. That's why people are struggling for position in the church so that all they are looking after is they are, they to look after their belly. Money, money, money. Doctor, bishop, 
evangelist, most reverend, all these useless titles sometimes that people don't understand and they put on their heads and their long robes. Everything does not reflect the work of God. Everything that Christ taught them, they are not using, they are not doing justice is of paramount importance that Christ emphasized most. They never cherished it. Which one do you belong? Brethren, are you so much anxious about title? If you are if you are going to church, what should be paramount in your mind is to read the Bible, know what Christ says we should do. Like Matthew 22, 37 to 39 that says, Love your God with the whole of your hand, love, and love your neighbor as yourself. And you begin to do good to people. James 1, 27, the same thing. Then Matthew 23, 23, the same thing. Justice, justice, justice to the poor, justice to everybody. So what the essence of your title now and the church going, or the Bible you are reading that you do not practice all these things. You can't even forgive fellow men. Ah, So what is the essence? I was watching a film this morning and I saw a place where in a church. You see, different things will take different people to hell in a church. And the wife of the pastor and one of the workers, they were quarreling. They abused themselves and the pastor came and settled it for them. And they said, okay. But towards the end of the year, when they were appreciating um, the workers, the wife of the pastor decided not to give a gift to that very woman that they had quarrel, and at the end of the day, she died. Everybody died. They even the one the the worker we are talking about also didn't forgive her from the bottom of her heart. So you see, forgiveness is to overlook, and you have to come back as if nothing has happened. If not, it is waiting for you in heaven. If you don't know to unforgiveness will take a lot of people to hellfire, all right? To, and even in this world, it will deprive them of uh, people that will be of benefit to them because when people see that you are unforgiving, they will not want to support you. They will not want to help you. Unforgiveness. Some people, it is pastors that are preaching and teaching. Adultery, fornication is what will take them to hell. Because they cannot hold their body. Yet they preach to others to hold their bodies. You see, may God help us, particularly we men. Men, men, men in particular. We are so entangled with this temptation of um, sexual immorality. May God Almighty deliver every one of us from it in your virtuous name. So some people, it is the spirit of anger, anger, anger. It says, a bino similar con weary. Nothing good comes out of uh, anger. When you are angry and you cannot be calmed down, <laughs> the end of it is disaster. So, because you, you, in the process, you will undo yourself. That's why the wise thing that Christ says we should overlook whatever and forgive and then uh, stop being angry. You may be provoked, yes, be angry a little, but do not sin. When you get to the point of forgiveness and you talk to the point that you think it is only you, it's dangerous. So let us know. Peter and James, they missed it here. That's what, that exactly. They went for, there for titles. But uh, Christ is the great thing that it is what you give to the people that matters, not what you take from them. Some pastors to administrations of money, 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 money. That one was also there on that film. I wish I knew the title. I would have asked you to go and watch it. I watch it on the uh, ZIT, one of the channels. So, but the lesson is what we are saying. Different things will take different people, either to heaven or to hell. But what is it? Let us listen to the word of God and do what God wants us to do. So that not only will our life here be peaceful, but our heavens will be guaranteed. Please, I plead with you. If you have anything against anybody, Erase it from your heart and, you know, let your life begin to smooth sail again. And then, uh, like I said, the pastor that was used as an example there preached about money, 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 money. When he got to heaven, he was denied heaven. 
was sent to hellfire. Ah, then it started lamenting. Ah, with all I have done, everybody there also died were in the same fire with him was in. Ah, but this man preached and taught so much, ah, but the love of money brought him there. I don't know which one is yours. Is it the love of um, sex? Is it the love of power that you just want to crush anybody? You don't want, I mean, that's even very common in politics. You see what is going on after all the elections and we're still wasting our time in the court of law because somebody says, I mean, the, which election in this country, even in the world, has been completely hit free? When the outcome comes, you all take it and then wait for our time. All these things we are doing, thinking that we can bring down somebody. When so God has established somebody, you cannot bring him down. Amen. So let us be careful about all these things. Next. Okay. But the blind ask for healing from Christ. Okay. But the blind. See, many of us, we need to ask Christ before we can receive. Matthew 7 7. Ask, seek, and knock. We need to ask. Because if you don't ask, you don't receive. You don't seek. Go out to look for it. You won't find. If you get there and you don't talk, you will knock. You won't receive. Amen. Many of us unbelief and not asking. It's actually because when even when Bartholomew cried to Christ, Christ came to us, what do you want me to do? He says, I want to receive my sight. Go and tell God what you want him to do with your life. Let him give you direction as to what you want to be. Stop wasting your time in doing negative things. Focus on God, who is the author and finisher of your faith, and who can provide you with. Honestly speaking, do you think life is so short that there is, if you understand, you will have no time for quarreling or wasting time. Rather, you will focus on the purposes that the Lord has sent you. You, you need to devote so much time to give yourself economic power, and that is not to live as a pauper, and you need to do so much to improve the lot of other people. So, but uh, Bartholomew asked and he received. You too, ask God, whatever is worrying you, is it anger? Is it job you are looking for? Is it husband you are looking for? Or wife you are looking for? Or is your home in turbulence? Ask God to please intervene and let your heart come down. And then, so that the Lord will answer your prayers. But if you don't do that, one will only be barking like a dog. And the end of it will be like the, the end that the Bible says will be the lot of the people there. Yes? Leviticus 5 to 7. Mm -hmm. All laws of sin and the rest. God bless you. The whole of Leviticus, don't worry, man. The whole of Leviticus 5 to 7. They are the details of the regulations given to Aaron or the priests on how to administer various offerings, sin offering, gift, uh, guilt offering, um, um, other offerings, many of them, they are listed there. I tell you, if you are reading the Bible, you won't enjoy reading all these Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. You will not like them because the details of the law. These laws were handed over to the priests for them to use it to administer life. If you steal something, there is a penalty that you, and how to do it. If you lie, there is a penalty of, and how to do it. There is a, and then guilt offering, sin offering, all sorts of, you know, carisons. And that's why I'm telling you, if you look at it, the rituals that we are doing in the churches today, they stem out of all this uh, Old Testament practices, the rituals, going to the river to bathe, doing everything, because they say, uh, is it Elijah, Elijah, ask somebody to go and bathe in the river. So those periods have gone. Today, God is healing without those. Christ did not use water to heal anybody. Sometimes he will use his speech. Sometimes he will use ordinary sense. Sometimes he will just decree. He used different methods. But the rigidity of the Lord that we are all running to, 
Christ, you see, the sin offering, that is even of the paramount, utmost importance of all the offerings. Christ has offered himself as a living sacrifice to take away our sins. So we don't need all this rubbish. We don't. He came to save us and he has saved us. It is just for us to follow him. With him now, all you need to do is love your God with the whole of your heart and your, love your neighbor as yourself. Do good. Go about preaching and teaching the word of God. Matthew 28, 16. Matthew 28, 16. You are a preacher. You are a minister. Go all out and engage yourself constructively in your own uh, professional calling and at the same time in the ministry. You cannot fly with one wing. You cannot face your uh, secular job alone. No. Do both. Your second wing is the spiritual wing so that you can fly well. Be as close to your God as you are to your work or as you are to your wife or children. Be very, I know some men are very away, far away from their home, so, so return home. Return home. The Lord will help us in Yahushua's name. Let us come down to the level that the Lord wants us to do. If anybody asks you to do rituals today, you don't need any ritual. All you need to do is pray to God Almighty and change your ways if you are doing evil. If you don't know what is wrong, apologize and then mend your ways with the people. You want to wait until they say you have to go and buy soap, you have to go and do. If you want good success, Joshua 1 day to 10. Study the word of God and understand it. Have the knowledge of the word of God and do what he has. It's one of the things that the Bible has you to do in the 2028. Um, 1 to 14 is you have to labor with your hands and God will bless it. And God will make the environment suitable and make everything work in your favor. But if you are still looking for shortcuts, those of us Christians who are burying Bible in our, under our shops, stupidity of the highest order. You, you, you just wasted the paper. You see the paper? The word inside that you are supposed to take in. You didn't put Take them into your heart, but you buried it on the ground because you want people to be patronizing you. you you've turned the Bible to, um, um, what do you call What does the Muslim call it? Um, tira. Or you, you've turned it to a talisman. It's wrong. You are supposed to take in the word there and do what the word asks you to do. Study the word of God. It's a guide to you. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. You're supposed to be corrected, rebooked. You know, you're supposed to lead you to God. You're supposed to be guided. You're supposed to be reproved. Where necessary? Is there anything outside this? It's not Christianity. It's ritualistic. And the Lord has removed that. Christ's death, his blood, has once and for all atoned for our sins. So what else are you looking for? Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you once again for this important message this morning. Accept our thanksgiving, your precious name. Lord, the grace to understand that you have taken away our sorrows, our rituals, and everything for us to now follow you in a clean way. That grace, please grant unto us in your precious name. Father, the salvation you have given to us free of charge, don't let us lose it through our own stubborn hearts or not adhering to your ways in your precious name. I pray, Daddy. Help us to navigate this world successfully and reign with you in the end. In Yahushua's name, we pray. Please ensure that you share to others. God bless you.